this is our next project, and it is called The Dead Beat Escapement. And it was invented in 1675, and later on, in the early 1700s, 1715, uh, this George Graham actually built clocks with this movement, with this escapement in it. And in these clocks, and I'm not sure how many he made, but lots. Uh, so it's an actual escapement, and uh, this is how it works. Do the shot here. One of the first things you're going to need to get started on this project is a set of plans. And uh, I just happened to sell these on the internet. And uh, my, my address is just below this video in the description. And uh, if you're on a... Uh, cell phone, um, you'll have to remember this address is dctdrawings.com, and you can purchase them there uh, over your phone as well. So this is uh, the first sheet. It's, it's the, the assembly, the biggest drawing, and this is made up of two 8.5 by 11s, uh, but it, it sticks together and matches up real nice and uh, this has got all the parts and where they uh, are going to go in the in the project this is a side view as you would look at it on the wall and this is the top view as you would if you were looking down on it and these this is another uh, section looking down and that starts in in right here the cc is corresponding to this CC that's looking down, that's where you'd start looking. That's what that's drawing there. These uh, sections over here, A and B, the B is looking this way and starting here, and the A is looking this way, starting there. That's, that's that. This is the material list. This is the part numbers. And uh, I have what it's made of and where you might be able to purchase that. Uh, these are the names of the parts and this is the pages that I'll run through here real quickly. They're uh, the, fab the pattern pages and from where they're at right there. This is the instructions and that's pretty, there's not much in, in the way of instructions instructions it's just point blank this is the printing instructions and uh, these are the prints this is this it has splice lines so you'll have to cut that out cut on the dotted dash line now i'm just going to thumb through these a lot of these have splices in them the, the particular nature of this one escapement it's it's big um, the this two of the wheels are so big that a small drill press uh, won't reach to the center and so this is a little jig that you can make and uh, clamp it to your 
to the side of the gear and uh, use a regular hand drill and drill and still get it through. Okay, well, before we get started on the actual construction of our project, I wanted to kind of review uh, the material and the equipment that we're going to be using and give you a chance to see uh, what you probably should have uh, to do this. So right there is a scroll saw and in front of it there is some turpentine and there's a spray adhesive in that can there and it is to uh, spray on the on the wood and then we'll spray the back of these paper patterns and then adhere the patterns to the wood and that's our mark that's our dimensions to get things cut out and that's really accurate. I've built several of these type of things and it works real well that way. Uh, this big guy here is a drill press. Okay, what I wanted to show in this video is how we're going to use this jig uh, to drill our center hole of this big gear. So, first thing we need to do is, is put a hole with a pin. These are, there's a pin on the end of this. And uh, I'm going to mark the center perfectly. Okay, now I'm going to bring our jig hole over here and set that right in the center so it's in that hole. So it's fairly stable. Okay, I wanted to show you how we make this little sander blade for the jigsaw. It's really simple. We'll wait to take a fingernail file and glue a, an old used blade down to that, just like that. It turns out pretty ugly in the back there, but uh, this is the, the main sanding device we use to get the sides of the gear smooth and, and how I mesh the gears so that it might save you some time. The first thing to do is, is put it in the, on the shafts that these gears are going to go on and I have an extra 
uh, pin here. This is uh, this will be where the pallet goes. And then you notice I've marked these uh, two gears here, and that's where no matter what I do, if I work on a tooth over here, then I might be sanding these. And then I want to check it. I want it to be in the same place it was. Because if I'm sanding away and fixing several places that will never see each other again, that's not good. This is what you need to do. Once you get all the, I've worked on this for a while and, and it's it's smooth. Um, and that's what you need to have. So not not sticky. Go to test it, go real slow and, and that'll be the best test. Okay, that's how we mesh the gears. And it looks like there's, they've started to release. So I'll, I'll peel a couple of these off and show you how that's done. Now it doesn't always come off where the where we put tape, so just warn you, it's not unusual. Notice that the axle dowels are stuck through the, the shaft holes and the uh, clamps are on and that's uh, ready to let dry. Okay, this is the little crutch that the pendulum rod connects to and then this is what swings the pendulum. This is a timing wire that's the best name for it. This is a power. small gear. The escape wheel. Thank you. 